So this video is just a quick update to sort of let you know some future plans really I guess you'd say. I know I predominantly said that I'm going to concentrate on course vlogs, I'm not doing reviews, so far I've stuck to those principles but I've also tried to make the channel not just about golf, in, even in the title it's just Leicester Bernie Barnes and not Leicester Bernie Barnes Golf. So I've just tried to share with you sort of thoughts, ideas, how I'm feeling um, as we sort of move the channel forward. And I just want to introduce you to a series which is going to be about me, about trying to get back to scratch. You might think that that's a difficult task. I think it's a difficult task myself. I'm 42 years old. Um, you've seen me play on YouTube for the last four, five, six years from sort of the origins on Mark's channel right through to Dan's channel and now into my own channel. And I know it's not going to be an easy task. However, it's one that I feel that I can make a series out of. Um, I feel that I can get to scratch with a bit of luck, with a bit of help from a few different people and sources, whether that be having golf lessons or some psychology lessons or even some fitness coaching. But, so a little bit of background for those that don't know. I was a professional golfer from 2003 to 2011, primarily based at Torquay Golf Club. I wasn't really a player. I tried for six months to play. Played like local West Region stuff and some minor tour golf, but realised pretty early that I wasn't. That wasn't where my path was going to go. I wasn't good enough to play full time or make a living playing full time. So I concentrated mainly on the shop and coaching. After ten or so years in the golf environment in a pro shop, primarily based, I decided to go back as an amateur. So that was 2011. I applied for my amateur status. In those days, you were, had to serve a period of time between being a professional and getting your amateur status back. And the RNA, unfortunately, gave me two and a half years. So I was two and a half years in a bit of limbo. Churston Golf Club were good to me. They let me play in the competitions and get a handicap, but it wasn't an official handicap. I couldn't enter county events. I couldn't enter southwest events. And my handicap was basically like a society or a club handicap. When I got my handicap back, I was off um, scratch and I remained sort of scratch or one for sort of six, seven years. Had a bit of minor success. I won the club championship at Churston a couple of times. Um, had a couple of decent results in county events, but I just really concentrated on playing locally and playing for the club. When the new system came into effect, my handicap for was scratch. I think I was 0.2 or 0.3. And the new system with the average scores 8 out of 20, you know how that works. They gave me a plus handicap. So I was off plus 0.7, I think, which was plus 1. Um, and then after a couple of comps, I actually got to plus 1.8, plus 2, which realistically I was never that good. But the handicap system was very much weighted on good scores. And like this is the tricky bit now because I don't want this to sound like I'm looking for sympathy or that I'm looking... Yeah, I guess sympathy and stuff like that because I or that I'm sad or that I'm depressed because that's not what this is about. This is trying to explain what's happened to my handicap and how I'm going to move it forward. And I feel that it's almost like a bit of therapy by talking to the camera, by talking to you guys and girls at home that I'm sharing with you my journey and how I, you know, let's get all emotionally involved with this journey and hopefully that you'll enjoy the series. So I sort of rejoined Cherston sort of three years ago as a member from Torquay. I played a bit of amateur golf at Torquay, but came back mainly to play golf with my dad. Uh, my dad was a massive influence in my life, uh, still is now actually. And he's the sort of main reason that I want to do this Scratch series, to sort of make him proud and a bit in his memory, I guess you'd say. So when I rejoined Churston, unfortunately my dad passed away in sort of March um, a couple of years ago. So it's two and a half years now, which is crazy. It doesn't actually seem anywhere near as long as that. Um, and i be honest, I found it hard playing golf at Churston because every time I went back, his memory was there, which is, there were some good memories, don't get me wrong, but obviously the, the thought of losing him and not seeing him again and not talking to him when he was such a big part of my life made it 
made it personally difficult for me to actually be on the golf course, particularly at Churston. I guess what I'm saying is that I sort of really lost interest in golf. I was out there playing, but I wasn't really playing. I was just sort of messing, not messing around, that's not the word. I was going through the motions. I didn't want to be on the golf course. I had no like levels of concentration, which is unlike me, because... I sort of always made the best out of my game. It wasn't ever particularly brilliant, but I could get a ball round. I would scramble. I wouldn't give up. And I was probably known for that more than good golf. The fact that I would be annoying. I wouldn't go away. I would keep chipping away and trying to stay in matches and, and competitions. Whereas I sort of lost all that fight. I guess as well, I sort of gave up playing. You having a bad couple of holes and you just let it affect you and you'd be like what's the point why I'm out here I don't want to be out here I want to get off the golf course as quickly as possible and my handicap rose I was um sort of plus 1.8 in the year and I went up to sort of three four handicap and then I continued to rise and actually last year the end of last year so we're sort of talking November December time I was actually off 5.7 well, I'm down to 3.8 now and I've got some scores now where I've got three hits as such so I'm knocking off some bad scores which I should better reduce my handicap so the aim really is to try and get this handicap down to scratch so we're going to start from now when this video goes out I'm going to put some more time and effort into it. I have been working on several aspects of my game you probably noticed my putting I've now gone to a more conventional short putter I've been practicing as well with my chipping and pitching which is sort of got to a more acceptable level although it still needs and requires a lot of work and attention but my driving has gone downhill massively maybe because I've concentrated more on the short game aspects and have not really done much driving I did buy a ping drive at the start of the year which initially made like quite a difference and I was hitting it well but recently I've been hitting the ball all over the place with that and I've actually then lost confidence which now means I'm hitting sort of five wood or two iron off the tee which is not ideal so that's an area I do need to address quite rapidly this is going to sound a bit like a sob story but I actually as well um, I thought I had gout in my foot last year um, the end of last year started this year but it turned out after x-rays and tests I've actually got sort of arthritis in both my feet it's not that bad to be honest at the moment I can manage it I'm taking some tablets for it and it's not really restricting me but it meant that until I got the diagnosis of arthritis I sort of let my fitness go I used to run sort of three four times a week I would football train I would stretch and do stuff but I've really neglected that so at the moment I do feel like I'm sort of not flexible and not as fit as I'd want to be and it's probably important as well that I don't overdo it. Um, I used to hit hundreds of balls a day, whereas now it's going to have to be quality over quantity, as, as they say. And um, every bit of practice I do is going to have to be, we're going to have to make the most of it, make the best of it and, and get the most out of that practice session possible. Because I don't think I'm physically or mentally able to stand on a driving range, hit four or five hundred balls at a time and then, go and chip and putt for a couple of hours as well so. I'm also also going to look at some sort of getting fitted for golf clubs and, and getting a set which I feel completely comfortable with um, Nick and Richard at Sub 70 have been absolutely brilliant with me the last couple of years I worked with them as in a sponsorship deal last year and then this year we've just remained in touch but I wanted to sort of carve my own path really and, and be sort of independent from any make or manufacturer but they've been absolutely brilliant with me and they've helped me out they've sent me caps bits of clothing and and said if i need any help with any equipment they'll be there for me so i'm gonna sort of hit those guys up again and see if i can sort of create a set some of their clubs some of my own clubs and, and get a set which i feel completely comfortable with and get my gap ins done as well because i think that's really important that your equipment suits your game so has anybody else got any sort of handicap targets or targets for their golf for next year, 2024? I know we're still in the middle of 2023, but I feel like it's important to set these goals early and stick to them and almost get a little bit of a head start on the goals. So what do you realistically think I can get to? I'm not going to be offended if you don't think I can do it. I mean, I've got doubts myself, but I'm going to give this a real good go in my dad's memory and you know what do you think I can get to like comment below is it realistic to get to scratch I'm going to be 43 in September um, 
I know potentially I've got the game, but having that potential to get to scratch and actually get into scratch is sort of two different scenarios. Right, I think I've talked enough now. So thanks for watching the video. Please like the video, please subscribe and please comment below. Let's see if we can get to scratch.